That's so just, that's I crazy. just I just full disclosure, I'm a nerd, and when we're done, I brought something that I really want you to sign. <laughs> I collect Funkos. Like, Do you really? Major, yeah. So I've now and actually I just did in San Diego. I did the big Funko 25th anniversary party. Okay. Uh, they asked me to go to that, yeah, and so I didn't Mike, go. So Mike, Mike, who is the man, the myth, the legend, um, him and I become really, really good friends. It was me, Fluffy, and um, Corey, Feldman. Corey, Corey Feldman, and uh, we amazing. we announced my first ever solo Funko because the band has Funko. The Funkos, band has Funko, but this is my first on my own. So uh, they always hook us up, and they always hook me up. I hooked him up. He was in tears. When I tell you tear, he is the yeah. biggest Star Wars fan in the world. Are you serious? No. <laughs> his first his first crush, I'm gonna I'm gonna embarrass you. His first crush was Harrison Ford. My first crush was Harrison Ford, actually. So, so <laughs> literally <laughs> like I will cut I will so, cut a bitch. <laughs> so one of one of the one of the one of the many surprises that I did for him, we went to see the, the remake of was it Call of the Wild, oh, right? Well, yeah. And with uh, you know, Harrison. Uh -huh. And I'm finishing up the red carpet and Harrison's like two people behind me. I love surprises. Like I love it. So we get on the red carpet. Harrison's like two interviews behind me. And then I talk to his publicist and I'm like, can you please maybe just, can, you know, can we say hi? He like talked to us for like 10 minutes at his own movie before he was the last one to go in. The sweetest man in the world. Isn't he wonderful? And so back to Funko's, I, um, I collect all the like exclusives. Okay. So I have your Valentine's Day Book of Tan exclusive to you? in my truck. So yeah. <laughs> just I'm just I'm just saying. Yeah, I brought it with me. Cause it's I, I have all of them up on display in my office. And I was like, I walked out, got in my truck, I'm like, shit. And I turned around and I grabbed it. I was like, okay, good. Oh my god, I yes. love it. I have I still have one of my Valentines left. I got two of them and my nice. daughter convinced me to open one of them. So oh, she yeah. plays with Bo Katan and Grogu Valentines. Oh nice. So like she absolutely does. Um so when you met Harrison Ford, was was he a a backstreet fan? Like was that sort of like uh, the introduction of that? No, I mean I introduced myself. He knew the band. Okay. Um it would be kind of hard not to know but, the band. I mean, you know, like, let's, but I'm weird about celebrities. Uh -huh. Like I, I've always prided myself on being very like approachable, mm -hmm. but I'll never approach celebrities. I'm very I similar. just don't, yeah. cause you, you just don't know. Like they might be approachable. They might be like, what are you doing? You know, you just don't know. And then they may be that never meet your heroes person, which like, yes. will crush you. Yes. yes. So, which happened to me once and then she redeemed herself. With, okay, yes. We won't talk about who it was. No, no, it's it's it's, it's fine. <laughs> who redeemed themselves? No, I'm well, so curious. My band set me up, and they embarrassed the crap out of me. It was Gwen Stefani. <gasps> she was. We were doing the Billboard Awards. It was back, I think, in like 1998 or 99, and she was having what looked like a pretty serious conversation with James Hetfield from Metallica, mm -hmm. and they were like this close talking, and we're about to go on stage, and my boys are like. Gwen, AJ has a crush on you. I'm like, oh, God, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> so I walk over, and I'm like, hi, I'm AJ, nice to meet you. And she's like, oh, nice to meet you. And right back to her conversation. And just right back. And I'm just like, oh. And I just got drained. Cut to years later, we meet at some party or whatever. Sweetest, sweetest person alive. She really redeemed herself from me, even though that wasn't her fault. It was my band's fault. Um... <laughs> We, my wife and I took my oldest when she was like maybe three or four mm -hmm. to go see Gwen. Uh, and solo she, or no solo, doubt? Solo, solo. Okay. And she stopped her meet and greet line and spent like 15 minutes with my daughter. Aww. And that, done. I love it. Done. When you're cool with my kids, you're cool I'm with me. I'm the same way. When, when you met Gwen that first time when the band like embarrassed you, mm. was that the first time that you had been in the vicinity with her? Because you got, yeah, ever. because No Doubt and Backstreet Boys sort of came on the scene at the same time, right? Like 96? Yeah. Yep, 96, 97 in that area, yeah. Right. I mean, that was my first time ever being in the same proximity as her. Yeah. Like, I had always had a crush on her. <laughs> Always had a crush on Paul Abdul. Oh my God, Paul, um, you and me both. I learned the entire dance to- um, Straight up? Straight up. Yeah. yeah. When I was like six or seven. Nice. I did. We So I met her 
the first time we ever did The Tonight Show, back when Leno was the host, okay. I was 19 and it was my birthday. And my mom came out to LA and Paula was at the top of the stairs about to come down to go to stage for her interview. This was right when American Idol was just about to like start. Okay. And my mom's Wait, like- Paula Abdul was the first judge on American Idol, yeah, wasn't she? Yeah. I completely forgot yeah, that. Her, it's been on, Randy, and Simon. Yeah, it has been around for yeah. so long. I completely I forgot. And this was back when there was two hosts. It was Ryan and I forgot the other gentleman's yes. name. So, so my mom yells out at the top of her lungs, my son is the head of your fan club. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Were you Which legitimately? Which was true. I was. The head of the, head of the Florida <laughs> chapter- for oh her, my God, I love like, it. oh yeah, I was the head of a I fan club. It. I just saw her in Raleigh. I just did a con in Raleigh, and she was there. And she like, is like phenomenal. She is. She's phenomenal. so sweet. She's always yeah. been sweet. Yeah. So um, you talk about that though, because I am the same way. Like I, when I meet actors, I could care less. I know that. I think I don't know why. I'm. Hmm. I respect and admire their work, right. but I don't get like tongue tied and like freak out fangirlish yeah. around. I do that with musicians. My that's musician it, that's thing is like on fire. See, I'm the other way. Yes. I'm I'm with like actors and actresses because growing up, I started in like in like musical theater. I've always yeah. wanted to be an actor. All my friends keep telling me, dude, you have to act. You do voices, you do accents, yeah. you you are like a method actor. Why do you not do it? I'm like, I I, I don't I, I really haven't had time. And now it's like I have time, but like I'm still trying to like but now facilitate. There's a strike. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. And I was a strike. Like, good luck. Congratulations. No auditions for me right now. I know. Um, you, so, but you started, so going back, you, when, when you were living in Florida mm -hmm. and was it your mom that interest, cause you grew up with, with a single mother, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Was it your mother that sort of pushed you into dancing and acting or was this something that you felt from the <clears> very <throat> beginning of your life? Like, this is what I want to do. And your mom just helped facilitate that. That. It was that. I lived to be in front of people. Mm. Uh, my mom said that when I was baptized, there was a baby before me that like peed and pooped herself. She was like not having it. <laughs> when I got baptized and the gentleman held me up, I smiled. You were like the Lion King? I, yeah, I was like, Fah, <laughs> I smiled in front of the entire church. And my mom was like, oh, he's special. <laughs> probably in, in more ways than she probably thought. But like, you know, I, I used to sing with like a hairbrush. Um, I was the nerdy kid that brought a briefcase to school. Um, I got bullied a lot. I got picked on when I was mm. a kid. Um, I took my mom's glasses and popped the lenses out and wore them because I wanted to look smart. What do you think that the bullying was from? Do you, can you pinpoint what you, you think it was? I think was just because I was so different, different and because like, you know, who carries a briefcase to school? It's a backpack. You're supposed to have a backpack and a lunchbox. I had a briefcase. I mean, I probably would have too, <laughs> to um, be honest. Then, then, then when, then, when the, the Nintendo Power Glove came out, oh, shit. that's I, all I wanted. That's all I wanted. When and my was mom, this? This was, God, it was the late 80s, probably. Like before the Game Boy? I, I, yeah, okay. it was definitely before Game Boy. So, so the Power Glove was like a controller. Yeah, for it had the all actual... the controls. You could do like Mike Tyson's punch out on it. And all that stuff. Okay, so it was it looked like, like a, Robocop's It was hand. like a cousin to like the guns for Duck Hunt. Basically, got yes. It. Okay. So I got it finally at Christmas. Actually didn't like how it played. So I cut the cord off and I wore it as like an accessory. And I thought, okay, and now I'm gonna be cool in school. <laughs> Made it worse. Made it so much worse. Oh my god! It made it so I much worse. I love that you, as a child, were like, "This is it. This oh, yeah, is this that is, thing." Yeah. Kids are gonna be like, "Wow, he's so creative." Yeah, no, and no, no, the opposite. Mm -hmm. Right kids, there, like I, little kids, like I, they poo poo and shit on creativity because yeah. they, no one at that time, I think that that we're taught as children to like just fit in. Yeah, just fit in, and when you're different of, at at all, mm -hmm. you don't fit in, and you get yeah. picked on, and it no, just and happens. I, and I and I, you know, I was the theater nerd. Like I mm. was, in, I, you know, drama. I was in chorus. I that was my thing. And the majority of my friends were girls because I wasn't the like typical jockey obnoxious boy was that also because that you were in dance and you you leaned into that's how you made more of your friends probably yeah i mean most of my true friends were from my drama class or were from dance yeah um if you can imagine me in tights it's terrifying <laughs> i um, like to imagine mm. most men in tights yeah, it's the no. great equalizer yeah. <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> these are some hunk of hunk of burning some, thighs. Listen, from yeah. from someone, I got some some junk in my trunk. Yeah, I, too, there's so. nothing going on here. <laughs> uh, when God made me, He had a choice, and He gave me a voice. Gave me nothing else. Nothing else. No butt. No legs. No, like literally, not a calf muscle to. Like, yeah, it's, it's, there really, are those moments when you see bad. somebody that like sort of has it all and you're like, God was like in a generous mood oh, yeah. that day. Oh, yeah. Like, he was like, sure, why not give him everything? Yeah. No, <laughs> I got, I got my moneymaker and that's, that's great. And I'm, and, and I'm super grateful. But no, but I, yeah, like for me growing up, you know, I'm an only child. So like I gravitated to people, like just like my oldest daughter, mm. like, from when she was a baby, like, I know a lot of babies that if you take them from the mom, like, they lose their mind. Mm -hmm. She was just like, hi, everybody. Hi. That was me. Like, okay. just good with people. Um, and I just lived to be on stage. That's where I was the most comfortable. I was very uncomfortable off stage, hmm. which has definitely translated over the years, yeah. and which is why I've had my demons and this, that, and the other, you know? Was Backstreet Boys your first big break um because that was the from the moment you yeah. started in auditioning i mean obviously it's the 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 biggest break yeah. but do you was was there anything before that that like sort of made you realize that you could do this so i i got uh, i got cast on a tv show um it was a show called hi honey i'm home okay and it was for nickelodeon mm -hmm. and then abc picked it up and it lasted half a season and then it got canceled. But before it went to ABC, I got fired. Uh, and the producer chose his son to take my role because oh, me, the man. lead actor was like a Michael J. Fox look, height. And I was supposed to be the younger brother and I towered over him. Mm. And I was only going to keep growing. And he was already, he was like one of those 23-year-old actors who looks that like looks he's 15. 15. <laughs> so, yeah. So... The producer was like, this isn't going to work dynamic-wise. Oh. Um, so literally, the show gets picked up. I get canned. Oh, fuck me. I'm 14. Use my language. Sorry. I'm 14, and I'm like, wow, I just got fired from like my first job, like real job job. I got fired. But literally six months later is when I met Lou and auditioned i was the first one i'm the i'm the og so for for me yeah. it's been 31 years you were the first one i was the like, first one that helped I put say the band cast together because lou really did yeah. bring the band together yeah and i facilitated putting the band together with him because i was the first so you know i helped put the band together how do you as a child do you remember do you have the like hindsight to actually go back to like that 14 year old kid and say what was it about being fired that didn't break you? Because that would have broken mm. an adult. So what is it about being a child that, that it didn't break you and it put you in a position that helped you get to the next step, which was the biggest? I guess for me, I, like I said, I felt most confident in a performance atmosphere. So for me, if I didn't get a role, it didn't bother me because I knew... I knew my talent. I felt good about it. I felt, okay, you know what? Maybe it's going to be the, the you know, next one or the one after that or after that. I didn't feel defeated, mm. you know? Yeah, it, it stung. Um, and I'm not going to lie, when the show got canceled, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the little devil on my shoulder was really, was, was like applauding. Yay, yeah. you guys suck. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I wish them all the best. Uh, but I but, get that. I no, get but that yeah, thing. I mean, it's I, hard to see things succeed that you were excluded from. Yeah. And so when I met Lou and then when the so there was there was two in there was two versions of the band. There was myself, Howie and Nick and two other members before the finalized band. And one of the members didn't work out. Um, had a good look. Not the best voice. Okay. Um, him and Howie were going to college together, so we <laughs> we went to dinner one night as a band, and we picked Howie to be the one to let him go because he knew him the best. So I went outside to have a cigarette, and I'm just like, I, I, I'm just gonna let this happen. I don't want to be a part of it. I don't do confrontation. No, me either. So he let, he got let go, and our oldest member at that at that time really wanted to be a solo artist, and it's like, but this is a group. It doesn't work that way. So then he quit. We got Kevin, who was working at Disney, 
And then we need a fifth. And we, we, we were like, do we go back to some of the guys that almost made the cut back when we all auditioned? Mm-hmm. Or what do we do? And he just kept tossing out, I, I've got a cousin. That, and that's I think Brian, he, right? Yeah, yeah, I think he can dance. I know he can sing. I don't know if he can dance, but I'm pretty sure he can. And then he called Brian. Literally, he was a senior. Uh, called him out of class. He had never been to the principal's office, not once, and got sent to the principal's office. And he's like, what the hell's going on? It doesn't surprise me. He looks like the type of person well, that was shocked. Yeah. To so, like... well, he's a good Christian boy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, love you, Rock. Um, no, but uh, he's like thinking it's going to be his mom or that there's yeah. some kind of emergency. And he's like, Kevin's like, what's up, cuz? He's like, what do you call? I'm in school, dude. What are you doing? And he's like, well, yeah, you know, this, this, this. Uh, so I'm in this band and da, 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 da. You want to come down to Florida and meet the rest of the guys and maybe this, that, and the other. Where was he living at the time? In Lexington, Kentucky. Okay, so not too uh, far away. Yeah, so, because Kevin was also from Kentucky, um, Louisville, but he moved to Orlando, I think he said, in like 90, 91, and started working at uh, Disney. He was Prince Eric, he was Aladdin, he was a Ninja right. Turtle, Sebastian the Puppet, um, all that fun stuff. And... Um, and I'll never, I'll never forget, Nick and I, so we had a band house that we would, like, rehearse at, do school at, tutoring and whatever. Mm-hmm. And our rehearsal space was this hot-ass, humid garage that we put up these crappy mirrors and this really bad floor to dance on. Um, and the doorbell rings, and it's Brian. And Nick and I answer the door, and I'll never forget it. He had a fade, with like a pompadour. He had a cut-off flannel shirt, cut-off frayed jean shorts, and I want to say he had the sh- the shack the shack attacks the Reebok pumps. I'm a big sneakerhead, massive. But and then we're like, hi. He's like, hey y'all, I'm Brian Lister. Nice to meet you. I'm Kevin's cousin. And I'm like, oh good lord. Oh no, no no no. The accent's slowly gone away over 30 years, but it's still it's cut. still there. It's a still bit. there a little bit. It's but there. It's it's there like Madonna and Johnny Depp have a British accent. It's that's that's how it's there. <laughs> Like, just because you live in the UK for a little bit, no, what's happening? But it does happen. I'm sure it, do, I'm sure it would happen to me. There are certain things, like, I'm married to a Canadian. There are certain things now that I just, that come out of my mouth as a Canadian. You got a couple it of just, boots, a couple, it, uh, there's and a, a, couple of and a couple of A's. There is, I, there's definitely some A's coming out of my mouth now. Yep. Yeah, it happens. It and if happens. somebody, and if somebody hits you in traffic, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, I'm I, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. I said sorry way before, but it's yeah. the way you say sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm now so I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I love Canadians. I, <laughs> my therapist is actually from Canada. All the good people um, come from Canada. Yeah, it's true. Minus the KKK members, but that's fine. no. One of my favorite, one of my favorite lines in any stand-up was Robin Williams when he says, "Canada is the apartment above a really good party that's never invited." It's so true. And I'm like, that's so sad and so mean. It's true. It's so true. But they don't and want Mexico's, us up there either. Mexico's They're like, Mexico's the stay. after party. <laughs> oh, yes. Mexico's. Tijuana. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, so but, Brian shows up, and yeah. now, so you talked about Brian being, like, the good guy. Like, were your personalities, was that something that was cast purposely by Lou or and you, or was that something that, like, you legitimately, like, did you sort of, did you guys lean into these different personalities? Well, to- so, so I knew Howie from a plethora of auditions throughout Orlando, and Nick as well. The relationship that Howie, me, and Nick had never made sense because I'd get sent to a cattle call audition and I'm the only Latino there with a bunch of blonde-haired, blue-eyed, you know, Beckhams all over here. And I'm like, wow, I'm never going to get this part. Why am I here? But then anything Latino that was Latino, I would always see Howie Howie. Um, And I always give Howie so much crap. We did, there was a thing called the Latin Carnival. Uh, it was at these the uh, uh, fairgrounds, and I did a forty five minute one man show. I did every talent that I had in me, <laughs> and how he had a, a singing partner that was his girlfriend at the time, Jennifer, and they were performing inside. I was outside, and when I tell you I did everything I could do, I'm talking about magic, puppetry, everything I could. How do. How old were you? Twelve. Oh, Jesus. And I won. How he came in second. So I always tease him about it. Then I won a thousand dollars, which for a twelve year old is a lot, that's a of, lot money. of money. Like I'm I'm rich, bitch. Like, do um, you have to pay taxes as a twelve year old? 
Like, does the government take your money if you're I under mean, 18? My, my they mom, do, right? My mom put I, it in my savings. I don't know. It's been so long since I yeah. had a job when I was under 18. Yeah, I don't my remember. mom probably put it in my savings, and then I probably I'm sure it's it the later. tiniest amount. Yeah, but, um, well, like, back in the day when we were with, when, when, when the band first started, we got, and I still have my first paycheck. Lou gave it to all of us. It was for $75, and it was our per diem of just, you know, during the week in, like, mm -hmm. rehearsals. And uh, and it it's funny because I have it right next to 35 million copies, copies of Millennium Sold. And it's just this amazing it's dynamic. Juxtaposition. It's just it's amazing. It's insane. Yeah. That we've we've made it this far. And it's weird to me still. I it people say, has it ever hit you? Yes and no. Mm. Like, yes, when I can now step back and just look at like I still to this day, there's there's two things that I love. Well, sorry, there's three things that I love to do at night on the bus or at home. I live for realtor.com. That's my porn. Zillow is uh, my porn. I like look at unrealistic prices and realistic oh prices. Oh my God, me too. And I love this shit. But I love to look at the designs and the architecture. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll go and watch old videos on YouTube of us and just go down memory lane hmm. because some of them I forgot or I don't remember whether it's because of the drinking and the drugs or it's just been too long. Mm -hmm. um, and then I love movie trailers. Like I'll watch movie trailers nonstop all day, every day. Do you watch that crazy? What's that crazy lady on YouTube? The one that hates me. I don't even want to give her a plug. I won't do it. Um, I won't even. Well, just, I, now I'm like saying because I it, love tra I love trailers too. Oh, I I I. Well, I'm a movie nerd. Like I love yeah. horror movies as my number one. No, why? Lo I just my mom. It's because my mom. Oh. My first Says the girl my who's first an Oculus. horror movie I watched when I was eight years old is still, eight. in my opinion, one of the greatest. Makeup masterpieces in history. Okay, what is American it? American Werewolf in London. I mean, I don't disagree is with you. A legend. It's iconic. Terrifying movie. Ter terrifying movie. Not even the actual werewolf stuff or the transformation scene. The like neo Nazi nightmare sequence. Yes. That's the one that always scared that me. That gets you. Pet Cemetery. Loved it. Choked on my sweet tarts watching it in the theater. Terrifying but movie. Again. Not the movie itself, the, the the scene with the sister who has the the condition in the bed. I don't remember it's, these yeah. movies. I've blocked them out. My yeah. dad showed me inappropriate movies like Predator and Die Hard Predator, when I was oh, like Die five. Hard. Christmas movie or not? Christmas movie. Christmas movie. So before yes. the strike, we had a poster up there, and we were so worried that you're not allowed to talk about anything in the industry anymore. So we took right. everything down that had anything uh. to do with film. Still my favorite Christmas movie of all time. That, so 100%. for me, Christmas Vacation or A Christmas Story Christmas are my are so my good. top two as far so as Christmas good. movies. But I think those are everyone's because yeah. those are mine too. Then on the other side of movies, I love like psychological thrillers. I do love comedy. Like Memento and stuff like Memento, that? Memento, like Mulholland Drive. Like I really love good. movies that make you think, mm. but... Like some of the horror even has gone too far for me, like Human Centipede. Oh my God. Um, I watched Human Centipede and I literally, I mean, I didn't watch it. I um, like fast forward through it because right. I was like, what is everyone talking about? And then I was like, this is just repulsive. I tried, I, my, so when my wife and I first started dating, she was big because she, she does like special effects She's a makeup. makeup artist, right? Yeah. So she was big into that stuff. Um, she walked out of the of our living room with human with the with the you know centipede, but it was awful. Our our first date was like the best worst first date you could ever have. So we went to and it's no longer there. It was a restaurant at City Walk called Camacho's. It was a Mexican restaurant. We still love Camacho's. And but the whole night this mariachi band was playing. So like we had to scream to have a conversation. <laughs> it's like, what do you want to drink? Um, then we went to the movie to go see the remake of uh, Last House on the Left. Okay. Did not know there was a seven minute, very uncomfortable rape sequence. And I'm sinking in my chair like, <laughs> oh my God, this is so bad. Like, this is the movie you chose to I'm take like, a date to. You're know. like, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm like, not even. I didn't know. It's not that I'm interested in it. I just. But 
That was March, March 22nd of 2009, and we are still together. So, yeah. But she stopped watching movies like that. She was pregnant with my first when we went to see the movie Prisoners, which was very intense. That's a really intense very intense. Movie. That she'll never see anything no, horror she's or gonna, suspenseful. Like, she's gonna like go into like clampsy yeah. or whatever it's called, and like the yeah. yeah. So no. that did it for her. Yeah. Um, but I've slowly, I'm slowly getting her back into like graphic stuff. Like I'm obsessed with the boys. It's just <laughs> so good. I've uh, heard this. I want to. So you're. I read a story. Um, and if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to, but that you and your wife separated, but temporarily. Yeah. And it intrigued me so much because I, I understood that. And I wanted, I wanted to know from your explanation, what that, what it looked like to you, what that meant and why that was the decision that you guys made. You know, we, so I've, I've put my wife through hell and back. Mm. We've been together for 13 years and you know, the majority of that time, I wasn't sober. So there was a lot of highs and lows. Yeah. Um, and I always tell her, like, if I were you, I would have dipped a long time ago. But clearly you've seen through the wreckage something in me that has kept you around. Yes, you love me. Yes, I love you. But there has to be more to it than just that. You can't stay in something toxic just because you love that person, I believe. Agreed. It's not good for you or that person. But... Like I said, she saw glimpses, um, but we had just come to this place where we were like just coexisting and living under the same roof, you know, kind of just co-parenting. Like it just physically, emotionally, we were just kind of disassociating because we were both dealing with a lot of crap. And so I was like, look, if we stay under the same roof, I think it's just going to continue down the same path. I think we need to take a break from each other. And, well, obviously, I'm still going to be with my kids every day, and I'm still taking them to school yeah. and have play dates and whatever. But we need to take the time to really hone in on ourselves. Um, so that's what we did. And I went back on the road to finish up the tour. And I was home for a week. Our couples therapist made a suggestion for me to go to a place in Arizona um, called The Meadows. Um, a, it's, it was an IOP, and for anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's intensive outpatient. So you're not in living on site. You're there for three hours a day. So it's, it's like outpatient rehab. Outpatient rehab okay. uh, for specifically for depression, anxiety, trauma, PTSD, adult, or ACA, as they say. What is ACA? Um, adult child of alcoholism. Okay. Um, and then whenever I go into these things, I always go in with like five things and come out with like 20 things. So I came out with something new called Lala. Never heard that one before. Love avoidant, love addict. Um, oh, yeah, I get that. Okay. You know, and then... <clears throat> One of the weeks that I was there, I went to what they call Survivor's Week, which you are inpatient. Like, you're staying on property for five days, eight hours a day of the most intense trauma therapy you could imagine. Did you go to Meadows specifically this time in Arizona for uh, substance abuse or nope. for these the, this is the for, yeah, other this, mental... The uh, other mental and, like, uh, internal crap. Like, I've never dealt with any of it for like 40 years right um the biggest issue with me was aj versus alex there's two entities trying to coexist and a lot of my demons stemmed from when i'd walk off stage I'd, i i wouldn't turn it off mm -hmm. i stayed in the aj mindset because i was getting attention i was getting external validation Women, drugs, prestige, power, money, all of it. All of that is incredibly intoxicating, though. Yeah, of course it is. Like, I don't think that anyone hears you say that and goes, I don't get it. No, I don't think that they would. Yeah. But I did not know how to separate the two. So the biggest reason I went to the Meadows was to learn how to separate the two. And learned one word one very big word that I know a lot of us have heard the word, but I don't think a lot of people understand what the word means, which is boundaries. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a lot of people, like, you. when I heard, would hear the word in passing, I'm thinking of, like, a perimeter. I'm yeah. not thinking of it in an emotional standpoint. Mm -hmm. So learning about boundaries and learning that, like, I've told all my bandmates, I've told my closest friends now, I'm like, hey, if I'm not working, don't call me AJ. AJ is my persona. That is my job. I need to look at what I do as a job. It doesn't define me. Mm -hmm. But for 20-something years, five years, seven years, it defined me in my mind. That was my identity. And so now, like, these breakthroughs that happened while I was gone and just even being home now. I just got home four days ago. Yeah. It's been different being home. And it's been great. It's been, um, like... The communication between my family and I, my band and I, just everything that matters most to me is different. Is that because, and I talk about this all the time, because the growth mindset, I think, is such a beautiful thing that mm. we need to talk about more in our society. And, and to me, what that means is constantly working on yourself, mm -hmm. trying to understand yourself better in right. order to become the best version of yourself yeah. for you and the people around you, because we get one life. Exactly. And, you know, I, so one of the videos that we watched while I was there um, is this woman, Brene Brown. I love who Brene. Is phenomenal. A genius. And I love listening to her talk. Yeah. So I love her. So because of her, I wanted to take my tattoos have become an external diary of my life. Uh, they're not just to do it, to do it. Like, I'm not one of those guys who walks in and looks at the thing. Yeah. I'll take the weird. Whatever. My first um, tattoo was everything subsequently after that yeah. is a roadmap of love and loss. Yes, that's same for me. Yeah. So we watched this whole thing with Brene Brown, and I'm like, okay, that's what I'm going to get. So I got Braving, which is one of her acronyms. Yeah. Boundaries, reliability, accountability, vault, integrity, non-judgment, and gratitude. Um, Walk me through what that means to you, though. So boundaries, obviously, again, exactly what I said. Having boundaries where, you know, the boundaries to me ties into the other tattoo I got while I was out there, which is, I put the initials because I couldn't spell it, but a therapist, when I went to the inpatient part, um, said to me, if it doesn't fit, don't wear it. Mm. And my whole life, I've taken on everyone's shit. What a phenomenal I, metaphor. I have carried the weight of everyone on my shoulders, and it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's my family, whether it's my now family, uh, whether it's my, my band, whoever. Um, extremely codependent, people-pleasing kind of person. I'm a Capricorn is what it is. Um, we got a big heart, wear it on our sleeve, it gets smushed all the time. But now with boundaries, I can, I can protect that and I can, I can protect little me. Yeah. Which was another reason why I went there is to, you know, understand you have the wounded child, the adult child, and then the functioning adult. We all want to live in the functioning adult. Right. Being interdependent and being, you know, having boundaries, healthy relationships, no toxicity, um, but I lived in the, you know, adult side, which was lies, manipulation, um, you know, uh, just living in the AJ mindset for just so much of every part of my life. Reliability. I am a pretty reliable person when I'm sober. Um, I mm. show up like I was in full panic mode on my way here because I hate being late oh, to it's my biggest anything, thing too. anything. Oh, and I, I showed up on tardiness. time, but I was like, I will bob and weave through traffic. If I have to, I, I hate yeah, I being will. late, hate yeah. being late. Yeah. Um, accountability, you know, obviously taking responsibility for anything and everything, um, owning up to things, you know, working a 12 step program, um, you know, which I've never actually done until now. Uh, Which is interesting because you know, you've you've been you oh, have I've, been sober. I've been in and out of the rooms for years, yes. but I've never done what is suggested. You've never done the work. Yeah, I've never done the work. Now I'm doing the work, and you know, accountability is kind of the most difficult step in a 12 step program, which is your fourth step, which is a 
fearless and moral inventory of your life. Um, you know, what you did to people, how they affected you and what that end result was, which is grueling. And most people relapse over their fourth step because it, it you're, you really got to dig up a lot of, a, a lot of garbage. Because that, that accountability is when you actually admit fault yes, and, exactly. and that you hurt people. And I, I don't yep. think anybody intentionally, unless you're crazy person, which they do exist yeah. in this world, but I don't think any good person intentionally ever hurts anyone. No, and to admit and no, that you did that, that's is really not me. Hard. I don't have a hurtful bone in my body, right. but I have hurt, have people, hurt people because of being selfish and self-seeking as opposed to being selfless. But to be rigorously honest is holding yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. Vault, you know, protecting things, you know, protecting that inner child, protecting yourself which also kind of links back to boundaries. I was going to say, it's know? separate from boundaries, but they go yeah. together. Um, integrity. You know, it is what it is. It, it I think spells everybody it out. understands yeah. integrity. Um, non judgment. I'm the most non judgmental person you'll ever meet, except to I myself. I was going to say, from, to everyone else or to yeah. yourself? Because it sounds like not to yourself. Not, more, less now to myself. Yeah. Like now, one of my biggest fears in my entire life is failure. Mm. Um, and I will beat myself up to master whatever I have in front of me. Now I'm learning, you know what? It's okay. I'll come back to it. Put a pin in it. If I don't get it the first thousand times, doesn't mean I'm never going to get it, whatever that is. Yeah. I'll just come back to it. Move on to something else. What do you think? Cause a lot of people have fear of failure for many different reasons. Mm. What it, what, what is yours? Mine is, you know, again, it's it's back to the external validation. It's it's back to the people pleasing, wanting you to like me. So if I fail at something, you're going to judge me. You're going to look at me as a failure. You're, you're going to think I'm worthless. Excuse me. One thing that I did learn, which is mind boggling to me, is everyone is born with self-worth and value. 100% agreed. Even if on one end of the spectrum, you could be, God forbid, a murderer on death row. You still have value and you still have worth. Yeah. Or you could be the most innocent, sweetest child in the, in the entire world who is whatever. You have worth, you have value. Every single person is somebody's baby. Yes. Yeah. And, but I felt my only worth and value came from my persona. Do you think that's because from a very young age you were give, were getting so much outside gratification and validation I'm sure, sure. Yes. that was completely attached to your ability to produce something completely not for who you were completely that was a hundred percent that to me was at the epicenter but the catalyst now looking back on it you know would probably be my father mm -hmm. um, you know abandonment issues with me you know, having to kind of step up in my family and be like the breadwinner and having all eyes on me um, and me just giving, 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 giving and not always getting anything back in return. And I, I, I didn't expect that. But looking back on it now, I probably should have gotten something back, even if it was just a thank you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I did. A lot of times I didn't. A lot yeah. of times it was just expected. When you give so readily as a person, and I do this on myself as well, when I give of myself my time and my financial like support mm -hmm. so willingly, mm -hmm. it becomes expected because I I do so, so willingly. Right. Um, but I also don't want to stop that because it is who I am. Um, yep. And it's what I get, you know, for myself. I love to um, give people my time and my support, my yep. energy. So I'm working. The, the reason I'm so curious because I'm mm -hmm. working on a lot of these things as and well. And then G is gratitude. Um, you it's know, a tough one. It is. And I would challenge anyone out there. Um, and I do this to my to my closest friends. And some of them are actually doing it now. And they'll check in with me and they'll tell me every day is, you know, some people write a gratitude list every day. Great. I did for a little while. Um, say three things you love about yourself every day in the mirror. And every day they have to be different. It's hard as heck. But it's easy as heck to talk shit about yourself. So To easy. look at yourself in the mirror and be like, 
Oh, 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 oh. So I, I challenge anyone yeah. out there to do it. And when you get into a groove, you your your life will change. It will change yeah. drastically. And living in gratitude is also mm. something that is learned, not given. Mm. Um, for for me, living in gratitude is being of service, is being helpful to others, is being available to whether it's my alcoholic and you know addict friends being of service there or you know something as simple as last night i had dinner with my producer in in um, la and on my way home i was bringing my youngest daughter back her phone and my wife was just doing other things with the girls all day and just didn't have time to get coffee creamer Something as simple as me picking up coffee creamer and bringing it back. But I got two of them, so she's good. She's so locked she, in. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. But that's, you know, living in gratitude, doing doing something for someone else um, is really how I look at that. Mm. Um, and again, back to if it doesn't fit, don't wear it. Like, I will no longer. And look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and forth, you know, leaving 10 weeks of all this amazing epiphanies and these things that have happened. I'm not going to beat myself up when I slip backwards because I will, there will be moments that AJ is in full fucking whatever. Yeah. And then there'll be moments where I can go, okay, pause, check yourself, dial it back because like I even picked up weird things about myself that I didn't know I did. Like, when I'm in full blown AJ mode, I'm in performance mode. So I talk louder. I I'm more animated because I want everyone in the room to look at me. Mm. I want everyone to watch me. When I'm just being normal and being myself, I sit kind of calmly. I'm just chill. I'm still a dork, and that's fine. That's but a much easier thing as as a friend, as a partner, as a family member to be around. Um, because it's more, it's more real. It's more grounded yeah. for and, sure. Yeah. And I want, I want my kids to, to see, to see dad and then to see whatever they want to call me, super dad, whatever, yeah. when I'm on stage, that's, that's a different, it's a different thing. That's a different thing. Yeah. But when I'm with my kids or with my family or I'm with my closest friends, just be me. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, yeah, like that, that's, yeah. That separation, though, that that taking a mindful pause inside of the boundaries of a relationship and allowing yourselves to take a step back and take time for yourselves, because that's the thing that we don't do mm -mm. so much of the time, especially when children start to get involved, especially when we both have busy careers. I think taking care of ourselves becomes selfish. Yeah. We don't do it. And then the relationships can very easily crumble and become, like you said, you can just start to be co-parent partners yeah. and but that's it. What, what people don't necessarily, I don't believe all people understand is that there is healthy selfish. There 100%. is healthy selfish. Yeah. But when you hear the word selfish, immediately you think negative, 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 negative me, 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 me. No, there is a healthy selfish. Um, it's learning how to differentiate between the two. Mm. When you are able to do healthy selfish, it turns into selfless. It turns into, you know, self-care. Positive role modeling as well. Yeah. My husband read a study that said that, um, and I don't know the the percentages, but but children who grow up with a physically fit mother had nothing to do with fathers. But children who role model their mothers and that are physically fit are more likely to be physically fit themselves. So a parent, myself, so he brought it up and he's like, you have to no longer make excuses. Because I was, I was like, I'm too busy to go to the gym. I'm not mm -hmm. working out as much as I did before we had the baby. And he was like, you have to do this. You're not doing it for her anymore. Now you have to do it for, or for you. Mm -hmm. You have to do it for her as well. It's for both of you. Yep. Because if she sees you being more physically fit, then she will then emulate that behavior. I mean, that's what my wife's going through right now. She's, you know, finally put her foot down. She, unfortunately, after both girls, never had time to bounce back or a time to focus on herself physically. 
And my God, she looks incredible. Like, well, that also, wah, wah, like, wah, but like, <laughs> people no, no. also become the best versions of themselves yes. in a separation. Like, because we, yeah. we prioritize ourselves again. We're That's, no longer yes. prioritizing our partner. We exactly. prioritize ourselves first, exactly. then our partner. She, she would very easily sweep her feelings under the rug when it hmm. came to me. And, you know, I have to live with that shame and that guilt and I'm working through that. Yep. And there will come a point when I can look at myself in the mirror and forgive myself for my transgressions, for what I've done. Um, not there yet, but I'm getting there. And she even knows her part in some of the enabling without even doing it intentionally. Mm -hmm. It just happens. Sometimes you know? the, the, there's such a fine line between love and support and enabling. Yeah. It's, so, it's such a fine line. Yeah, because she would for her own maybe insecurities, whatever they might be, she would essentially, you know, blow it off that, oh, he relapsed again, or whatever, da, da, da. or, you know, he had fans in his room, da, da, da. Yes, it hurts, but at the same time, she would just kind of move, move, move past move it. Past it. Yeah. But now our communication is so transparent and is so like, okay, look, this is, this is what it is. Um, and look, no relationship's perfect. Everyone has to work at their relationship. But if you're not good on your own, you don't stand a chance. You That's know, my, my, my sponsor told me the best analogy in regards to, you know, why we needed this time to do this, these things for ourselves. He's like, everybody comes with baggage. Doesn't matter who they are. Different levels of it, mm -hmm. sure. But he's like... You and your wife literally were ball gagged, handcuffed, ankle cuffed, thrown into a river and said, be in a relationship. How? Yeah. How? You can't talk. There's no communication. You're, you're chained up. There's no physicality. There's nothing because of all the garbage that we had, you know, but she's been doing the work. I've been doing the work and it's, a, and oh, here's another acronym I heard that I absolutely love and i'm gonna find a place for it somewhere <laughs> is the word lover but spelled with a u so if okay. you and i are in a relationship and we're having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation okay l listening u understanding v the most important validating me listening to you but validating what you're saying because that's, what you're saying is valid. That's that repeating thing yes. and really listening yep. and then validating e, it by being able yep. to put it back e to them. E is empathy. And then R is kind of redoing, like doing it again. Mm -hmm. um, but the V is the most key part of that word to me, which is validating. Because for, for years, my wife and I would have conversations and I'd somehow turn it back on me. It's all about me. It's all about me. Uh -huh. You're wrong or this, uh -huh. that, the other. Now it's like, no, no, no. You know what? I hear you. And your feelings are 100% valid. Now, even in the back of my mind, if I don't agree with it, doesn't mean shit. Mm. What you're saying means something to you. And I hear that and I validate that. Yeah. And, and it's amazing how much easier the communication will be and can be. And it doesn't have to be even in a relationship. It could be, your, or like a, like a man and woman, it could be, Mom and daughter. Well, I was son, thinking that you know, the lover could be literally, it, 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 that is the way that if the entire world dealt with each other, exactly. it would be so much better. I yeah. think that sometimes we try so desperately to have the answers or to be heard or for yeah. all of these things that we're bringing so much baggage into every person that we encounter throughout mm. the day that at the end of the day, we have so little empathy for other people yeah. and what they're going through. It's true. And I think if we stop long enough to say, you have no idea what this person is going through, and therefore, you can't judge them. Nope. And you have to just l hold space for them, and then they, yeah. in your life, and then they're gone. Yeah. But you, you ha I think that that's the thing, is that we can't, there was this woman the other day when I was driving down the street, and she was literally doing a U-turn in the middle of the street. So I stopped, because I had to stop really quickly, and I just sat there and, but like almost like perplexed that this person was doing this. Cause she's looking at me like I'm the asshole right. and she's 
cursing at me and flipping me off and calling me a bitch. And I'm literally just sitting in my car, right. Not stopped doing yeah. as she's doing a U-turn because she's projected that I am angry at her, think she's right. crazy, all of these things, because that's what she thinks of herself. Mm -hmm. And she's like, literally from her car into my car, vomiting hate at me. And I'm just sitting there watching this woman yeah. pull a U-turn very slowly. And then I just started, like, as she drove away, I just started laughing. I was like, oh my God, this yeah. poor woman, something had to have just happened yep. to make her that angry. And I said to my husband, I said, I was so close to screaming out the window, something along the C-U-N-T word. Ah, like, see you I next was, Tuesday. See my, you next Tuesday. That's my, wife's, I, that's my she, wife's favorite word. It's mine too. As she was driving away, I almost screamed out the window. And then I thought to myself, you know what? For any person to act like this much of a child yep. in that moment, she had to have been going through something so horrible. Mm -hmm. I just need to let it go. Well, and no, I just it's watched true. her drive away. It's true. Like, I mean, I like, it's true. It goes back to... Um, you know, our earlier conversation about me with other other peers and not approaching them. You don't know how their morning started. You don't know how their day is going. You don't know what's going on in their life. You know, to just walk into their space as if you've known them for years mm -hmm. and strike up a conversation. Um, but every time that I've been in those situations... If I get eye contact and they smile, it, that's my moment if I'm going to do it. Because now I'm like, okay, they're inviting now. Yeah. They've, we've made eye contact. They smiled. To me, that's a sign of being open yeah. and being well, invited. If they, a, going, in. yeah, if they look at you and then keep going. Yeah. If they look at you and keep going, you're like, okay, cool. I got yeah, it. Yeah. I got it. I give you your, you know, space. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's funny. Like, me being me being a massive fan of the show and like watching all your videos and all your social media i'm just like before this even came into fruition i was like if i ever meet this woman i i I'm going to ask her for a hug she seems like she's one of those people that you'll meet and be like oh my god hi nice to meet you and you're a hugger melissa mccarthy Massive fan. I want to hug her. Sure enough, she was a hugger. And I was like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> met her at, so... Uh, Have you ever it, met somebody that you thought was a hugger that wasn't a hugger and you're like, oh, shit. Yes. <gasps> it's It's been a couple, mainly guys. Yeah. But there's been a couple of musicians and actors I've met... Where it becomes that, that awkward. you're just like, I don't... What's, what's happening? <laughs> I still think it's funny that we still don't know whether we're doing this or this. Or this, yeah. So it's like a... It becomes like a... Yeah, but, it becomes you know, like what, this cool it's like thing. some like yeah. samurai thing going on all of a sudden. <laughs> but no, but it's 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 just really interesting to me, you know, how how as a society, like you said, if if we were to like I, this is just my personal opinion. Everybody could use therapy. Um I agree with on you any on, 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 on any level. It doesn't I have to be I was on with my therapist right before yeah, we got here. It doesn't have to be <laughs> like Laying in the couch type thing. No. That's not, you know, there's a perception of what people think therapy is. Yes. And that's not that. It's self-care. Yes. That is what therapy is, is mm. self-care. Mm. Um, you're taking an hour out of your day to go inward and help yourself. Yeah. That's all it is. And a lot of times I think that that therapy for myself literally just provides perspective. Of course. And a lot of times when we get in this rat race of thought and this negativity and then this, like, we just keep going, just keep going. It's the pause and the perspective that allows you to just go, oh, okay, now I get it. My wife and I are very, like, liberal. We're very in, you know, we, I have been a massive ally for the LGBTQ plus community for, God, 30 years. Yep. Um, I got ordained to marry Mark and his husband. Um, I love this. Which, which 
backfired on me because now all my other friends are like, so are you still ordained? I'm like, yes, but I'm not marrying you. It doesn't work that way. This was a one-time one thing. thing. We had one of our friends marry us too. He was so nervous. And then my husband had to marry somebody in Mexico and he's like, this is not easy. Yeah, this no. is really hard. It's a lot of pressure. I think people yeah. think that you just show up and marry someone, but you can't. You got to know, you got to do your work. You got to know what kind yeah. of ceremony they well, want. You got to know how long it's well, going to be. Yeah. So I'm going to sell myself out right now. So I've had hair surgery twice. Okay. Have you? Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a third. Hair transplant or? Uh, tattoo. Tattoo. The transplant is done now, I think, but I just recently dyed my hair back to like 1999 me. I, I and, love this, by the way. Looks, this is yeah. bringing back, like, yeah. this is bringing back memories and it, and it, for me it, where it, I'm like. Yeah. And dun, the hair is growing dun, dun, back. Dun, dun, so dun. now it looks full. <laughs> but when, when I married Mark and Tom, I was using a dry shampoo to like, Spray my roots dark, right? Uh, yes, to make but it look I also full. hear dry shampoos are really bad for you, by the way. Well, FYI. the end result after we did the ceremony, because it rained, and obviously raining on your wedding day is oh, the best no, of luck. Oh, no, you Rudy giuliani Oh, it. man, I full oh, giuliani no. He's got photos of, oh, like, sweet black baby. running down my face. <laughs> it's, no. It's the best. It's the best oh, and the worst, but it's the best. I love the humility so much. Oh, I know. It, it's it, such a beautiful thing. No harm, no foul. But yeah, I love like, it. Literally, yeah. We just talked about that the other day, because um, we were at San Diego Comic Con together, and we were talking about that. It was just hilarious. I'm like, oh my god, I forgot that I had to go to the bathroom before the reception and wipe and the marks wipe off it my away. face. You could have oh. just rubbed it in like self tanner or something. Yeah, no, but it it had like coagulated, so there was like little patches of black puddles. Oh, oh was, no. Yeah. Are you happy with your hair transplant? I'm extremely happy. I, yeah. you know, I did it the first one I did before I got married, and were you losing your hair from a very young age? Like early twenties, uh, you know, my dad left and he took my hair with him. Um, <laughs> Listen, I oh, had a daughter and I feel bald. like I'm losing my hair. He's bald. My my dad started going bald when he was like 21. Okay. Um, I started receding when I was like mid mid twenties. And then it just, I, I, I don't have any scar. Now I have scars, but I didn't have any scars on my head. So I would just bick my head. I had a, like a bowling ball head, perfectly round. Yeah, you're, that's amazing. I don't know how that yeah, happened. And then I got I, like a mole on mine. Yeah, I'm, constantly I'm like. constantly scared I've got a tick. So <laughs> I, my, my barber, because um, I had never been to like an actual barber before. Uh -huh. And my old best friend, um, as a as a pre wedding gift, got me this like full spa day type thing yeah. at this barber shop that used to be down here on Beverly, um, and like with the with the hot towel and the straight razor. My husband's the whole just thing. started doing this. Oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. Yes. So my barber, who's still my barber today, that place closed down. Um, he was like, "You should, you know, maybe consider going and getting your hair done." Yeah. And uh, and if it's okay to say, your husband Mark's uh, husband got. His hair done. Okay. And so I went to his doctor, uh, which was at Hair Club over. It's no longer there. I but love it that was... it's just Hair Club. Like everyone thinks that like Hair Club, I would be like, oh, don't go to Hair Club. You need to go to this special doctor. Yeah. So Hair Club no, is hair where Club. I went uh, for the first time, and then, but I forgot that the old hair has to fall out for the new hair to grow. Oh, that so, first because you need the baby fuzz. Yeah. So I wore a hat at my wedding because I was like, oh god. Oh no. Um. And then I just did my second one this past December. Different doctor. Okay. Um, and he actually brought my hairline down a little lower, which I'm stoked about. And you like it? And I love it. And I was going to dye it blonde then, but my wife's like, because she's a hairstylist mm -hmm. as well. She's like, babe, until the hair grows in, you're, it's going to look even more bald. Yeah. If you if do you it If you do blonde. it too soon. Yeah. Yeah. So... Finally, the growth is in, and while I was in Arizona, I was like, you know what? I got a wild hair up my ass. I'm going to go to a salon, and I'm going to do it, and I'm loving it. And I, I love, love short it. bleach hair. Yeah. I had short bleach hair for like a second when my daughter was born. Mm. I shaved it off because I was having to wear my wig for the show, mm -hmm. so it was super hot under there. I had really long hair, so I, got, I cut it super, super short, mm. and then um, I lost like all dimension because my hair color, my natural hair color now is like that like dirty blonde mm -hmm. color. So it's like, there's no depth to it. Right. And so I just bleached it so blonde and I loved it. Yeah. I loved it, but it was really hard to grow out. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm gonna keep it no longer than it is now. I mean, 
I've my one of my grandmother's dying wishes before she couldn't even speak anymore. She was like, "You have to grow that beautiful long Latin hair." Like I, I, I miss it. So one of these days, I'm gonna just say, "Screw it," and just let it go. Go for it. I now just that haven't. You, now that you have the hair. Well, yeah, I'm gonna do one more tattoo session on my scalp, just to so the the whole point of that is to block the light. So no more dry shampoo needed. So what? Okay, okay, okay. So you're doing the tattoos. It's not a design. No, it's, it's literally, literally over the follicles and in between the follicles. It basically, so if I were to shave my head right now, it would still look like you have a little bit of stubble. I've never heard of this. Is yeah. this like something that you learned to do in conjunction with the hair transplant? It's, no, it's a recent thing that they've started doing. So the woman that did it at my at my hair doctor, yeah. she is or was a like straight up just tattoo, tattoo artist. artist. Yeah. But now it's in a cosmetic sense, just like women that get yeah. their eyebrows their tattooed. Eye, yeah. It's the same concept, but Interesting. you're doing your, and so she tattooed over my scars. So when I do shave it, you won't even see my what scars. What are your scars from? So I- Oh, you mean the- From taking the, you know, the donor hair. hair out. Yeah. yeah, do it, whatever. I am a proponent of do whatever you want to do exactly. to make you feel good. I hope to God I have the confidence yeah. and the, 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 it's just confidence and and to have a facelift at some point in my life well i'm uh, so, so terrified okay so before i show I'm you so... this before i show you this so so i did celebrity drag race i did rupaul's drag race love it and i and i won um and one of the weeks that we were doing it um raven which is rue's main makeup guy he's phenomenal okay I was outside having a cigarette. He sat me down and he's like, listen, how bad do you want to win this thing? I said, very bad. As I'm playing for a charity, I was playing mm -hmm. for a charity called Trans, uh, Trans Lifeline, uh, which helps the transgender communities in like smaller cities where they're getting a lot of pushback yep. and whatever to show more support. Um, so he goes, what do you feel about taping? And my initial reaction was to look at my crotch. Uh, my and initial he, reaction yeah. is to look at your crotch, and I'm trying then, so hard then, not to. And then he goes, no, 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 sweetheart, that's tucking. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, I'm so taping and tucking not the same thing I'm like, there's I, two. I thought you I'm just like, like, so there's taping and there's tucking. What do you do? Difference? What is taping? Oh, is that so, your boobies? No, no, taping is, so they would tape your eyebrows <gasps> up under your wig cap. Yes. But then also your they neck. They tape your neck. Your neck. So I worked with an actress many, many years ago who taped her neck. Every mm -hmm. single morning. Yeah. And because this is actually a really hard surgery to get because a lot of times one side will fall. Right. It's not so, consistent. So I had never seen myself with a jawline because <gasps> always my whole life I've had extra skin. It's genetic, which is why I've always had big beards mm. to cover. I don't like, I didn't like my profile. I didn't like any of it. So when I saw myself the week that I did Dolly Parton, I was like, holy shit, that's what I look like with a jawline. So I told my wife and I got really emotional about it. And she's like, well, um, let me do some research. And we found an amazing doctor. There is out a by very us. easy surgery. And so I did lipo and face tight. And then before tour, I did the, uh, what are they called? The, the jowls? No, the like the little hook things you do. The little, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, why can't I think What are the hook things threads, called? Threads, threads. They're called threads. So they go in here and they just kind oh, of pull. Oh, and they pull. Yeah just to speed the process up of like the healing. You're my hero right now. And I could not be happier. There is no pain. You don't feel any of that. I did have to wear a diaper on my face basically for like three weeks. To hold. It's like this thing around your head. So the threads, you didn't, it's not a facelift. That's the, cause I've had friends that have had like mini lifts. Yeah, no, where it's, they it's went not, around the ears no, and they're like, oh no. my God. And then the this, <gasps> this also dissolves after like a year and it's, it just goes away. I sat in the chair for three hours to cover my tattoos and the makeup and everything yeah. until Rue threw a curveball and made us all reveal who we were. And I'll never forget, there were these girls probably in their like mid-30s in the front row, and one of them passed out. She was freaked out that it was me. It was you because she I had was no like, idea. Yeah, she and was like 12 when yeah, Backstreet and I'm like, <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. But do you, have, do you have a weak stomach? No. Okay, so... And I've seen when a lot you were of asking pictures. about this, so yeah. this is a piece of my scalp. <gasps> Let me see. That is a piece of my scalp. Um, yes, it is. Yeah. So what's funny is, is I pra I do practical jokes with my friends, and I'll say, "Hey, do you want to see like the coolest, weirdest, um, <gasps> what uh, pork belly?" 
this is what and this I tell is, them that I'm going to show them pork belly. This is belly. what pork belly looks like to me. Yeah, so that's you know they take the entire strip, they break it into pieces, they take the hairs and put them in a petri dish. Yes, and then they separate the fat. When they make all the holes, they then put the new Little hair in follicles. the fat, and then they put it in there. But it has to be with the fat. With the fat. Because then, then it, like, yeah. plants it. Yeah, that's how it plants it's it. It's like then the it, fertilizer for the exactly. tree. Then it pushes out the old dead hair and latches onto the new hair. <gasps> and then the new hair will never fall out. And was it painful at all? You know, as the, like, it, for me, it was about a month with no with no feeling. Then as the feeling comes back, you'll be, like, talking like we're right now. Hey, I'll go like that, like, oh, crap, this sharp pain. Yeah. That's the nerves coming back. Got it. Um, but my first time I did it, <laughs> I was in the shower, and obviously I can see my hands, so I know where they are here. Yeah. So I was washing my hair, and then my wife came in the bathroom, and I was going like this, and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm washing my hair. What do you think I'm doing? She's like, hold on. And she went, boop. I was like <laughs> six inches behind my head, I not even it. touching anything. Anything. You and were like, wow, this I, is yeah, some new like, non sati yeah. shampoo. So, yeah. This is fantastic. Yeah, no, but... Um, but, oh my God, I love that. But after That is less hair than I would have thought they would have had to take. This is what I had to wear after my neck surgery. Oh my I, God, you look like a person that's had like, like a Joey facelift. Like I look like I know, I, I mean, and Joey, 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 Joey like knows Joey. it. Joey, Joey knows it, I look like Joey Fatone. <gasps> oh God, no, I know. You do look yeah. like Joey. I mean, I look like a chipmunk. Like it was like. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, that is absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, and this I, was yeah, during like said, and this was during me. COVID. Have well, you that's ever a great time have you ever seen that. a mask that big? No, but it's beautiful. Gin- it's like a tablecloth. But on I my literally face. said to people, if this was such a great time, I guarantee you, everyone in Hollywood had facelifts during COVID because of the masks. You could yeah. just go anywhere and you didn't have to worry about anything. So that was the jawline that inspired me. So when is I, this? That's me. Stop. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we have to put this up. Those tits are oh, gorgeous. Oh yeah, I still have them. They're in my office, next to my scepter and my crown. And I'll mess with my kids and I'll put them on to make coffee in the morning. These? And they'll be like, ah. Boobies They're big. are like Dolly would be oh, proud. Yeah. My and my and my ass, they made me Did so curvy. Oh yeah, they made me. So, I had nine layers of pantyhose. I love that. Yeah, and I and I love the blonde because it does sort of like that is like a, feels like like early AJ. Yeah, and it, it and I, I I I feel younger, and it's funny because after I did it, some random person at the mall in Arizona was convinced that I was J Balvin and I'm like no. Who's J Balvin? J Balvin is a Latin rapper but we do look a lot alike okay. and he has bleach blonde hair with a dark beard. Okay. And then but then so does David Beckham right now. So I'm like cool. I'm in I'm in good <laughs> I'm in good hands. company. I'm in good company. I'm I'm fine with that. If you speak so early Backstreet Boys I just want to like one thing I really wanted to ask you that like I because you've had when I was doing research for you, which was, I came in and I said, this was one of the joys of like my life, researching your life. Because it has, you have had so many different experiences mm. and you have had such a huge life, huge life. And I wanna know if you could go back, and I'm sure people ask you this all, all the mm. time, but if you could go back and change one thing, if you would or if you wouldn't, what would that be because of the trajectory of your life? Nothing. Nothing. Wouldn't change a thing. I, everything happened exactly as it was meant to. And I used to beat myself up a lot about like, how did I become an alcoholic? Like, how did that happen? Like. There was no physical abuse in my house. There was no active alcoholism, drug abuse. There was no, you know, my mom wasn't shooting up in front of me. None of that. Like, I had a very great upbringing. I was in a happy home. Yeah. But a lot of it stemmed from, again, like, losing sight of Alex and, like, having... And it wasn't even a rush to start him. People think it happened overnight. It didn't. Like, from 93 to 96, we were doing middle school tours in a Winnebago across the country, no label deal, no nothing. And we blew up in Europe first. The U.S., we used to call the U.S. no fan land. Like, we Mm. would come back here and you could hear a pin drop. Interesting. And then once Millennium kind of happened, it was was over. Yeah. Um, I was just talking to 
a buddy of mine, James Bourne, um, who is from the UK. He's in a band called Mick Busted. Um, and he is like a massive fan of pop culture. Like mm. Back to the Future is his favorite movie. He has a DeLorean. Like he's obsessed. <laughs> and he, I was at his house yesterday and he was telling me like what, how much our band inspired him and his band and all this stuff. And we were just talking about quirky, dorky things. And I said, you know, I said, one of the, so him and his buddy were talking about going to see, oh, going to see the Back to the Future Broadway show that's, oh, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that uh, just opened. Yes. And the show is over, standing ovation is about to happen. And James is like this gentleman who's been sitting in front of him the entire show, never got up, never got a snack, never got a water, stands up, and it's Steven Spielberg. <gasps> and he's like losing his mind. I would never lose said my anything, shit. but like losing <sighs> his mind. And I said, similar happened to me. When we dropped Millennium, we were at TRL and we literally TRL. We, I know. We literally <laughs> walked days. we walked next door to a movie theater for the premiere of episode one. Mm. And we get in our seats, and then there's seats open to my left. And then you see this whole security team coming, and then these people coming to sit next to me. And this gentleman sits next to me, and the movie starts. And I'm just like, I'm all about the movie. And I'm like, I look over, I'm like, holy shit, it was George Lucas. <gasps> and I'm just like, huh. Oh. And like, and we had met him after that. He was super sweet. We met him in Rome. At, uh, no, sorry, Milan. Um, and uh, nicest guy in the world. Yeah, but I was just like, I've never oh met my George. God, like, wow. Like, I would be like, oh, my God, wow, I still George. haven't been to Skywalker Ranch. I still, no. that's, that's on my bucket list. Oh, my I God, know if you ever get to, I know it's on you yours. If you ever get to go, can oh, you please going. be like, can oh, we're Katie going. come with Oh, we're me? going. <laughs> you should have more of a shoe in than me now. <laughs> we have to work on this together because I, mean, yeah. I have never been there either. I, I feel like uh, I need to text Dave there, like, right after we leave here. There is also, um, there is a gentleman. I don't know who he is, but my buddy who owns a jewelry store in Calabasas is best friends with a guy who has the largest Star Wars collection, period. The largest. Really? His movie theater looks like the Death Star. Like, everything, it is the sickest. And he lets people, random people, come and, like, look at his collection. His wife told him, like, you, you, you can have your toys, but you can't, like, take up that much space. It's like 3,500 square feet of nothing but Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. All so, Star Wars, everything. Original. In his wife's mind, though, that's not too much space. Well, I think their house is like 14,000 square feet. I was going to say, these so, people yeah, must have I, I, I think it's, I think it's <laughs> okay. But that's like, that's a lot. He has. That's a lot of toys. Everything. I'm sorry, and I like, shouldn't call them toys. That's so disrespectful. But he has like, I believe he has the original Boba the one that's like the rocket firing Boba wow. still in the casing. Um, well, you know George is actually doing like a big theater downtown, right? I have heard that. Also, I have so I have a question for you. Yes. Did Bryce direct any of the episodes that you did? Two of okay, them. Okay, I I'm the biggest crush on her. She She's amazing. Well, so I just I'm probably late to the game, but I just burned through every single episode of Black Mirror. <gasps> So like you I know never, her episode. Yes, which is where we're going. Oh, uh, 100% our society We're pretty is much going already, already there. there. What are you talking about? But Except for the contacts and like, but like literally but I, that, we're there. I think there. we're a second away from contacts we, that like control we are. our phones. And that literally, you know, have you seen that episode? Oh, it's, it's so good. It's She's so, so sad, good. but it's literally like everything is on a like basis and you're rated. So like, Welcome to our life. it's not a phone, but like, if I, if like, if she were to open the door for me, I'd go like this and it gives her points because she did and something her phone, nice. And it beeps because someone, I, you just did something nice. So basically this girl starts living, she's a, like a people pleaser yeah. because she wants to be liked and she wants all these things. And so her rating gets really, 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 really high. And it's all like instantaneous yeah. in the moment. And she like gets voting. invited to her best friend's wedding, sort of best friend, this other girl was like a bully to her, but she just wants that like recognition. She wants the points. And the the shit storm that ensues, her try like she loses points because she yells at the cab driver. She gets to the desk to book a ticket and gets into an argument with the person behind the counter and her points just keep dropping. Keep dropping. And like oh. literally she 
she breaks into the wedding, she loses her mind, and it's just it's, it's in beautiful. it's it's beautiful and sad. Yeah. But it is where we're going. But that's what all black mirrors are supposed to be. Yeah. Is... And I feel like either the creators or most most episodes are like either UK based. Yeah, they are. Or like or or that's UK actors. Like I feel like a lot of it is yeah. It must be a I think like that a they UK did production. like one season in the United States or something like that with American actors, but for the most part, it's like you know. Well, did I, you I see think now too? Like, There's a new season just came out. Did you see the new season? No, we so watched the first, it too so the, at first the first episode, episode. Yeah, with my with my girl Annie Murphy. Yes, she is phenomenal. She's a, so I got to meet her for the first time in Toronto. She came to our show. Speaking of Canadians, and she I don't know if literally is Canadian though. So I stole her because Kevin wanted to meet her too because we're both major Shit's Creek fans, but I wouldn't let her off my bus. And Kevin got really mad. But like, <laughs> so she made a TikTok with me and instead of ew David, she did ew AJ. And it was the coolest thing in the world. Oh my God, I love it. She but that episode is like essentially what is happening right now. It is what's happening right now. And so like, I'm just gonna put this out there. I'm just gonna say this right now. And because it's what I think as for me, as my band, what I think we should do, because mark my words, mm. we're next. Mm -hmm. The strike is going to be musicians next. You towards, guys, well, listen, Snoop has already started it. Exactly. Is just like when Napster happened, yep. just like when all these things happened, we have to go with the times to a certain degree. Okay? To a certain degree. I don't, I don't support what's happening in the SAG world. I don't support at all. I support you guys. I don't support what's happening. Yeah, yeah. But you got to go with the sign of the times sometimes. So why not AI ourselves, mm -hmm. copyright ourselves, own, yourselves. own ourselves, do the same thing with our voices? Yeah. Then, okay, cool. You want to use me? Pay me. Pay me. Pay me out the ass. Because that's the thing that bothers me. There is this person right now on Twitter. Can we even fucking call it that anymore, Elon? Jesus. I don't even, yeah, I don't what know is what it's it? called. There's this person on X. And that just sounds Oh, is stupid. that what it's called now? I don't I, even I, know. I haven't used Twitter I don't even know. Whatever. in probably five, ten it's years. It's so stupid. So there's this person that is using my likeness to teach an AI program to create something else. So he's like posting things about me and it's this AI is learning how to copy me in different situations. And I'm like, stop using my fucking face, man. Yeah. This yeah. is gross. Yeah. It's scary. It's really weird. And like, it's just weird to me. And I know that I'm a public person and I know that like, I know that I've already put my image out there and it can happen, but this is the, this is literally the reason why I cover my daughter's face on social media I've, and people yell I've at noticed. me all the time for doing this. I made a decision With little son. to cover sunflower, my daughter's yeah. face because she doesn't have the knowledge of what I'm posting. Mm -hmm. The moment my daughter, in my, when I decide, when my husband and I decide that she is old enough to understand and understand the ramifications of using right. social media, she will be allowed to slowly dip her foot in. Yeah. But until she's old enough, it is not my, I feel for me, oh, yeah. it is not my well, right I get, to Well, I still get that. begged from my oldest to have social media. Yeah. And I'm like, no, there's sexual predators. There's yes. disgusting people out there. Yes. And, and there's bullies. There's people that That's will, my and, fear. you know, and like, with body dysmorphia and all these things, I'm like, I don't want you guys to be subject to any of that. Yes. So, you know, and what I do love about my daughters, among many things, is they'll tell on themselves. And I love, <laughs> and I hope that that stays for the rest of their days. So like, my oldest will be like, yeah, I, I I I went on like I was watching TikTok videos on YouTube because they're also sort of a little proud like, of themselves. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, I told you not to, but thank you for telling me. And mm. then I can't get mad. No, it's hard to now, punish if they when they've been doing honest. It, that's different. But yeah. if you're gonna come to me and be like, so, Dad, I was watching because like I'll be talking about a video that I saw with my wife, and my daughter's chiming in, and I'm like, how did you see? When did you see that video? And yeah. why did you? Like, they've both seen on YouTube almost, I mean, damn near the entire movie of It just by watching scenes. Yeah. And I'm like, that's too violent it's for you. too violent. But they seem yeah. to be fine with it. I'm like, They're you're gonna not, They're going to start though, carrying around folding chairs. Well, they also tried to prank me because I'm terrified of clowns. 
the only reason why Pennywise is 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 excluded is because he talks. Most real clowns don't talk. And I was traumatized as a child back when there was Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, which is no longer. It's no longer, but I do, uh, listen, I do love a good. I was, when the little car comes out and the 50 gazillion clowns yeah. come out, which I still don't know how they did that. I think um, there's a hole in the ground. There has to be. There's no other way. I think there's a hole. But, there has to be a hole in the ground. Yeah. And I just, came, all, I just figured all this out as an adult. I don't know. <laughs> but this um, plus size female clown. Okay. Ran up the stairs, took me from my mom, <gasps> and like ran down a couple stairs and went, <laughs> and then gave me back to my mom. I pissed and shit myself, <gasps> and my mom had to take me from the circus, and I was forever scarred oh with clowns. Oh my god! Done. And my mom has played practical jokes on me with clowns to this oh, day. Of course she's she has. just she's. But that is it to talk about the things that happen to us as children that form us. Yeah. It's just absolutely. clowns, spiders, anything that jumps like frogs can't do frogs. Really? Yep, so my, do frogs. my I do, I'm not scared of a lot of things. Um, I will forever be terrified of sharks. Healthy respect Good, for them. Yeah. I like, don't go in the ocean. I don't go in the ocean. No. I, every I don't time even do boats. we go like on a nice tropical vacation, everyone's like, are you on the beach? I'm like, absolutely, but it has to have a pool because I will not go in the ocean. <laughs> like past, I won't, yeah. Like here. I won't go in the ocean, but like, for example, there's a, I think it's a, I want to say it's a Four Seasons in, um, on the Big Island. Mm. And, but there's a lagoon. Mm, I'll go in there. So, that's where I'll go. Yeah. You know? No. I will go in Waikiki. There's mm -hmm. like a, there's like a, there's like a, like a lagoon where everybody goes and like surfs and yeah. plays. I, that little thing. Paddleboard in there and whatever. 100%. Yeah. I will do that too because I can see underwater yeah. number one. Number two, mm -hmm. as long as there are other people in the ocean, I'm a real good swimmer. Yeah. I just have to be the fastest one. And yeah. I'm fine. I will leave my husband mm -hmm. to die. If a shark comes No, out. I, 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 uh, like you're, you're so gone. My so wife sorry. and I, we went as a family, uh, and we rented an Airbnb. This was, I think, God, three years ago, maybe. Um, and my wife and I went snorkeling and we saw this sea turtle and we're like, oh, we're going to follow it. And when we popped up, we realized how far out we had gotten. Oh, yeah. And the current was starting to pick up. The riptide was starting to pick up. So it was a bitch to swim back. Yes. And I started panicking like, we're far enough out that if something goes south, we're screwed. There's no way we're going to swim back. We're not going to get back in time. We're fighting against the current. And like, you know, yeah. So No, the drowning is my biggest fear. So well, I won't even. Yeah, yeah so, it doesn't happen. It like doesn't I said happen. earlier, I'm a big, big golfer. Yes. So we just did... Our last leg of our tour was what we called the exotics, like places we had never been. Is it like purely Iceland. just because you guys wanted to go on vacation to these places? I mean, well, some of them, yeah, like Iceland. <laughs> I mean, like, Iceland that be we've never been I to want Iceland. To go to Iceland, really Iceland bad is as well. Beautiful, gorgeous, right? Um, when I went and did a little tour, one of the areas I went, they shot part of Interstellar there, and uh -huh. it does look like another different planet. Yeah, um, they were shooting the, th I think it's the, th the third or fourth season of True Detective. Is it third or fourth? Whatever the no new idea. season yeah. with Jodie Foster, they were shooting that there. Um, a lot of uh, Game of Thrones yes. was, was also shot yes. there. And then from there, we go to Egypt. Which is amazing. Wait, uh, I'm dying to go to Egypt. I, I finally just... got on a camel. We didn't go anywhere. Mm. But it was, it was scary. Like you got on a camel and it, didn't move? Like, it, like, it's like it just kept getting taller. Like, good God. We went, I, when I was in Dubai, I got on a camel and actually like, yeah. went around I wanted to go walk around, but we didn't have time. Yeah. I got, at least got on one. At least one. you got on one. And the five of us took this like iconic photo of all of us on. Yeah. And out of all of us, I blend in the most. Just I just look like one of <laughs> the- like, there? I look like I belong there? I do look like I belong there. Um, and what's funny is, so- to tie into that statement before I sound inappropriate, mm. our current album is called DNA. So as a promotional thing, we did one of the DNA, like 23 and Me or one of yes. those deals. And, Which uh, I've done too. It was really boring. I went through mine twice and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Something is off. And, but then I did it again and it was the same all three times. And um, what was the most interesting to me is I'm predominantly Iberian, which is Latin, which is Latin, Latin right? Right. And then I'm Scottish, 
Okay. Um, Russian on my dad's side. Okay. My my first name is actually Russian. Alexander. Alexander is Sasha. Yeah. And then I got German on my mom's okay. side, and then we Spanish. got a lot of the same stuff. But then nine percent Nigerian, seven percent Central African. Really? Now, the Central African could be Egypt. Yeah, it could be Egypt. Right? Yeah. And then Nick kept messing with me. He's like, dude, there's got to be some kind of Arabic in you. There has to be. Huh. And he goes, I, I'll bet you 10 grand that you got Arabic in you. And we never shook on it, though. Mm. And sure enough, the last 1% was Arabic. Really? And I was like, thank God I didn't shake your hand. Oh, <laughs> uh, because I like, am a betting guy. Are you? I'm a, yeah, I'm a betting guy. I am guy. not. I feel like I work way too hard for my money and it scares the crap out of me to lose any of it. Uh, yeah. So I'm a big I, poker player and a big. No, gambler, my, but... my brother in law is a massive poker player and he's very good yeah. and he goes to like Vegas and he mm. like does his thing. I, um, I, it scares me. <laughs> you know, but, but you have to think like, it's we, we learned this from our parents who probably yes, learned it from their, their parents. parents. So we were told that there was the potential that a family member in our family had an affair with a, with a uh, Native American. It sounds so similar to what Nick said. Right. It's literally, I think that what this is, is that very, very, very Caucasian people like myself mm. want something spicy in them. Yeah. Well, and like, we have look at no Nick. Spice. He looks like a Viking for crying out loud. He literally, Nick and, he and is... I look like we could be related. No, he I is want Nordic. some spice in yes, me. Yes, you're, you're, yes. I do, I yes. do. I've always wanted it. It's not happened. It's fine, yeah. but it is what it is. But, like, yeah. but Egypt was phenomenal. The people were spectacular. Wonderful. We did uh, Bahrain yes. for the first time. Um, and... Uh, and then we finished. So I had done South Africa prior to the boys um, hosting a TV show. Mm -hmm. And um, the next season I'm going to be hosting is in Croatia. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a show called The uh, Fashion Hero. Mm -hmm. And it's not about fashion, which is what's ironic. Okay. Because when I was asked to do it, I'm like, is this like another America's Next Top Model kind of thing? Because yeah. I don't really... It, that's not your thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's really more so about... Um, the end game is the four judges are four representatives of four major brands. Okay. And it's finding a winner to be the face of that brand that is an everyday person because everyone is beautiful, no yep. matter your weight, your race, your age, none of it. We had a 19-year-old contestant and a 60-year-old contestant from Germany and people from all different, 22 different countries. I love that. And But you're also facing your fears and your a lot of them came in with either past drug issues or like uh, body dysmorphia or insecurities or um, bullying. And like we, me as the host, like I've been through all these things that yeah. they've been through. It is a beautiful show. It is a beautiful experience. Where can people watch that? Uh, Paramount Plus. Okay. Um, right now. And then uh, as, for, as far as the next season, I'm not sure where we're going to be going okay. there or what's happening, but it is a beautiful show. I want to watch and that. And more okay. people need, I think, to watch it, to be inspired, because it really shows every walk of life. Yeah. Um, so that was in South Africa. So I got to experience, like, I had a full, like, standoff with a baboon. Yeah. Because they just cased the hotel. They're all, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Um, did a safari, which was Amazing. beautiful. It's on my bucket list. Uh, yeah, I, it uh, was awesome. I, I hear uh, the neighbor's lawn equipment starting. Um, so uh, before we finish as quickly as possible, I want to um, have you talk about really, really quickly, and then and then we'll say goodbye, um, the, the, the beach party that Backstreet Boys is doing uh, in April of yep. next year. Yes, so we are going to be in Cancun next year. Um, we had started out years ago. We were doing these BSB cruises, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of different artists have done. Yes, um, they even, do them for conventions. As yeah, well. even like chefs and all yeah, kinds yeah, yeah. of all of it. So we were kind of tired of being on a boat stuck in the middle of nowhere, yeah. um, especially with so, COVID. You're like, yeah. Well, so we maybe wanted we, should have an we wanted to, to do a destination. Yeah. So it's the same concept. Uh, Jason Derulo is going to be performing as well. Oh my god, I saw us. Jason Derulo live. He's incredible. At an Amphar event one year, yeah. it was, oh my God. Yeah, he's incredible. He's fucking yeah. incredible. So he's going to be there with us. Um, 
we do like game nights, we do theme nights, and we're doing Love that. And, and we're doing, I believe, two performances as we usually do. But we're letting the fans pick the, the songs. songs. <gasps> so any from any album, from deep deep cuts. There's one that we know they're gonna pick, and we and we're gonna do it. We're obviously gonna do it because we love our fans, but we fucking hate this song. Are you gonna tell so me what it is? It's if you want it to be good, girl, get yourself a bad boy. It is the worst song we've ever recorded in the history of, the, of this band. <laughs> and they always pick they it. They always want it because oh, we no, hate it. I think hate that's it. why. I think they know, and so they want to. But see But they you think guys. it's a great song, and I'm like, it's not a great. So we have way better songs. <laughs> it is a piece of shit. <laughs> And it's, listen, oh. we all have pieces of shits. The only artists good that... thing about that song is the person that wrote and produced it is a legend, Mutt Lang. Yes, Mutt like, is amazing. Def Leppard, I mean, come on. Like, all, all Shania. All Shania. Come but on, Mutt. Aside fantastic. from that, yeah. no. Yeah. No. no. We are <laughs> no. I just want to see... I want to see them pick one Christmas song. Just oh, I'm one sure. Christmas I'm sure they song. will. I'm sure really? they will. Like, I hope so. Whether it's one of the originals yeah. or one of our yeah. covers, but yeah, this that. was our this was our, our our first ever Christmas album. I We've know it had, was, and, it's a and I great love album. it. Christmas in New York is my favorite. So that song I'm a is huge just... Christmas fan. Mm. My husband and I are moving. We've just sold our house in LA. We're moving to Oregon. And um, the thing, to Portland, right outside nice. Portland. But the thing that inspired, like, excites me the most about it is now I have a big enough storage room in my house because our house is so huge now <laughs> um, that I can store all my Christmas stuff and I can have like four Christmas trees in one house. Yeah, my my wife goes all out when I... it comes to Christmas. I'm Halloween. That's my okay, favorite. Okay, well, we do both now. Like, I go yeah. like literally tomorrow. We're going to do fittings. I found an amazing guy who does like movie grade costuming. costumes. He did my Deadpool costume and I've, and I've like kids have like literally thought so I was Deadpool. So you do like a, a big Halloween thing every year? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, 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 but this year we're going to be a Marvel family. I love so it. So I, I'm, I'm, you know, I wanted to be Mando. That's what I wanted to be. I've got yeah. the helmet. I was ready to it's, go. That's an easy costume. But I'm like trying to get my kids to do like Star yeah. Wars stuff yeah. and they wanted to be Marvel. So yeah. Uh, There's more to choose from in Marvel. So, yeah, so we're yeah, gonna be Marvel this year. Okay, which All I, right. I I could have been Deadpool again, but no, you can't. I do, think I'm don't. either gonna be Spider Man. Um, I'll probably be like, I I think yeah, which probably. which version? I mean, I kind of wanted to be Miles Morales just because I love that character. Okay, um, you know, I have half of his ethnicity. I'm I'm Latin, <laughs> um, but uh, or the. Tom Holland, but the final suit, yeah, which okay. is the comic book. Yes, the comic book suit. one. Okay, you all know. right. I'm gonna need to see pictures. I'm oh, gonna need yeah. to get info for the nail polish. Yes, I'm gonna um, need to get the name of the guy that did your your trans your your hair transplant yeah. and your face. Yes. Um, you guys, I never introduced um, um, <laughs> Alexander Mc McLean. Yeah, yeah. Hi. 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 Um, but uh, now that we're saying goodbye, I think you know who he is. Um, I could literally sit and talk to you forever, I, um, but once the yard work starts, <laughs> I get it. it gets no, really I, bad. I get it. I, you know, I, for a year, almost a year and a half, I had a uh, podcast with my best friend and with my dance partner Cheryl Burke, um, and it was all about recovery and sobriety. I and I know the gardening sounds. We would have to stop. And you know, it yeah, is, it was, it is, there are things that come up where you're like, yep, I don't know. Or my kids would be running around and I'm like, sit, stop. <laughs> or fighting upstairs, arguing. I'm like, oh my God, you guys, you guys know daddy's working. Come on. But that's what people love. People love that you're so authentic and, and you, you are so like real and honest and, um, it comes through and I, I'm so honored to have met you. Um, because I'm gonna, now I'm gonna I feel like, something. yes. Okay. Go. So, best friends for life. Okay. okay. Yes. Put your hand like this. Yes. Uh, uh, I, wait, your, got it. Other hand. Other okay. hand. Other hand. Okay. Go like this. That's a hand hug. <gasps> yeah. Hand hug. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> hand We're hugs. hugging hands. Hand hugs. I love this. Yeah. So. Oh. Best so if I life. ever meet somebody that isn't a hugger now, Just give I can a hand, hand hug. hug. Hand hug. I love that. Yeah. No, I love that. I. I I will now consider you a friend because I, awesome. I, you're amazing. Likewise. Amazing. Oh, amazing. I was going to say awesome and amazing at the same time. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Right. Um, you guys, uh, you know, check out AJ everywhere because he's awesome. Thank so, you. 
and I uh, wish you the best of luck on um, not luck, but uh, continued um, um, joy and success on your growth uh, journey. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Bye, awesome. guys. This has been a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this has been blah, blah, blah. Like, subscribe, whatever. <laughs> All the above. Do it.